Hello everyone. Today we discuss classification, the structure of sporophyte, reproduction, the structure of gametophyte and fertilization in lycopodium. Classification are as division lycophyta, class Elegulopsida, order Lycopodials, family Lycopodiaceae, genus Lycopodium. The genus Lycopodium is commonly known as club moss or ground pine. It's a large genus comprising about 200 species, growing mainly in subtropical and tropical forests. Some species are distributed in arctic and temperate regions. All the species of Lycopodium grow in moist and shady places, rich in organic compounds and humus. External structure of Lycopodium The sporophyte that is the plant body is well differentiated into stem, root and leaves. The stem is weak, slender and rhizomatous. In some species like Lycopodium clavatum and Lycopodium cernum. The stems are creeping on or below the ground. In other species like Lycopodium slego and Phlegmaria, the stems are erect and pendant. The branching of the stem is dichotomous. The stems and branches are covered with small leaves. Roots arise from the underside of the creeping stem. They arise in clusters or singly. Branching of the root is Dichotomous. Leaves are small, sessile, simple and lanceolate in shape with broad base. They arise spirally along the main axis of the stem. Mature leaves are provided with unbranched and midvein. Let's see this picture showing external features of Lycopodium. Now internal structure, first of all transverse section of stem. The internal structure of aerial shoots shows the following tissue systems. Outer covering known as epidermis and epidermis is one celled in thickness and covered with cuticle. The stomata are present in the epidermal layer. Cortex is massive and divided into three zones, outer zone, middle zone and innermost zone, outer zone composed of thick walled sclerenchymatous cells, middle zone composed of thin walled parenchymatous cells and innermost zone consists of one cell thickness known as endodermis. Still, internal to the endodermis lie the pericycle composed of 3 to 6 layers of thin walled cells. The steel is protosteelic condition with exact xylem. The xylem core has radiating ribs forming a star like moss or it may be in the form of isolated transverse strands like actinosteel and plectosteel. Phloem lies in space between the xylem rays. Transverse section of root. The root in transverse section shows epidermis, cortex and steel. Epidermis is single layered. Cortex is massive and composed of two zones, outer zone and inner zone. Outer zone with thick walled sclerenchymatous cells and inner zone with thin walled parenchyma cells. Steel is protosteelic with monoarch xylem, vessel in young roots and diarch of decaarch in older roots. The phloem cells lie in between the xylem rays. Now transverse section of leaf. The internal structure of leaf shows a single layered epidermis covered with thick cuticle. Within the epidermis lies one type of mesophyll tissue composed of rounded or angular parenchyma cells. There is a single median concentric vascular bundle. Let's see the diagram of vertical section of leaf 
showing different tissue or tissue system. Now reproduction. The sporophyte of Lycopodium reproduces both by vegetative means and by production of spores. First vegetative reproduction. Vegetative reproduction takes place by following methods gamma or bulbils fragmentation, resting buds, root tubercles and adventitious buds. Gamma or bulbils are modified vegetative structures that arise as lateral outgrowth near the stem apex. Each gamma or bulbil consists of short axis surrounded by a number of thick and fleshy leaves. The gamma fall on the ground and grow into a new plant. In case of fragmentation, the branches get separated from the parent plant due to death and decay of the older parts. The separated branches grow into a new individual plants. In some species of Lycopodium, the tip of the rhizome or branches store food material and become thick and covered leaves. And these are known as resting buds during incoming of unfavorable conditions. The whole plant dies except the resting buds. It resumes growth at the advent of favorable conditions and produces a new individual. Root tubercles originated from the parenchymatous region of the cortex. It consists of a group of cells with stored food material and protected by thick walls and has the capacity to germinate into a new plant individual. Adventitious buds are developed from isolated bulby leaves. It also develops in the stem near the apex. Such buds can produce a new plant. Let's see the diagram showing various vegetative modes of reproduction. Spore formation. In Lycopodium, the spores are formed in a specialized reproductive structure known as stropli or cone. Each stropilus is a slender structure, sessile or stalked, simple unbranched or dichotomously branched arising at the apex of the stem or branches. It is a cylindrical structure measuring 2.5 cm and consists of central axis in which fertile leaves or sporophylls are spirally arranged. Each sporophyll bears a solitary sporangium on the upper side at the basal portion. Each sporangium is yellow or orange colored and provided with a stripe jacket, layer of 2 to 3 layers of cells thick. Within the jacket layer is the fertile sporogenous tissue provided with nutritive tissue known as tapetum. The sporogenous tissue later differentiate into a spore mother cell, each of which by meiotic division produces a spore tetrad. Lycopodium is homosporous, that means it produces only one type of spores. As soon as the spores are developed, haploid gametophytic generation starts. Now, the structure of the gametophyte. A spore is the first cell of gametophyte. The spores are very small tetrahedral and provided with two thin walls, outer axine and inner known as intine. Each spore contains a single nucleus and fats, oils as reserve food materials. Lycopodium is homospores, hence the germination of a spore produces homothelic gametophytic plant or prothalli. Depending upon their nature, the prothallus or prothalli of Lycopodium is of three types. 
first type of prothallus is very small that means 2 to 3 millimeter long cylindrical or ovoid in shape short lived green in color and develops on the surface of the ground such type of prothallus is found in tropical species second type of prothallus is much larger that means 1 to 2 cm long more or less tuberous or carrot shaped long lived yellowish in color or almost colorless or subterranean such type of prothallus is found in creeping species of lycopodium third type of prothallus is intermediate between first and second types this type of prothallus have irregularly shaped tuberous body about 2 mm in diameter colorless and sporophytic in nature such type of prothallus is commonly found in epiphytic species since the prothallus is homothallic it bears both male and female sex organs that means anthridia and archegonia in a single gametophytic plant body let's see here in the diagram there are three different types of prothallus first type second type and intermediate or third type of prothallus now anthridia anthridia arise in several numbers in a gametophytic plant body they remain either only embedded in gametophytic tissue or projected slightly they are generally oval in shape each anthridium is surrounded by a jacket layer of one cell in thickness inside the jacket layer lies numerous sperm mother cell which is directly metamorphosed into small cubical biflagellate sperms on the other side archegonia also arise in numbers in gametophytic plant body they also remain sunken with only their neck projected outwardly a mature archegonium consists of neck composed of 6 to 13 neck canal cells and a narrow venter composed of ventral canal cell and an egg cell let's see the picture of anthridium spermatozoids and development of archegonium now fertilization at maturity the neck cells of the archegonium separates and the neck canal cell and ventral canal cell disintegrates leaving a passage for the entry of response or spermatozoids the spermatozoids after liberation from the anthridium makes its way through the neck and finally reaches up to the egg on reaching the egg one spermatozoid closes with the egg to complete the fertilization as a result of fertilization a diploid zygote is formed with the formation of zygote diploid sporophytic generation begins thank you have a nice day